Hello and a very good Saturday evening to you. Welcome to News First Weekend Primetime News live on TV1. I am your anchor tonight, Shahin Jurang Party. Let's start off the look at tonight's headlines. President hands over proposal to declare the Tripitakaya as a UNESCO World Heritage to UN Permanent Representative of Sri Lanka. E. Saravanabhavan's stance on media. Udangal, Matamuragaturai Sand, Enne Porta Varayal, Mahinda Rajabatsa Artikam, Tatpodia Ranil Vikramasing Artikam Medail, in the Verbad Milai, in the end of the Kadan that Nal and Gali Kanda Mudiv. UBFA MP Lasanta Alagiavanna says that media rating mechanism is a mafia. Public Utilities Commission of Sri Lanka says it is illegal to disconnect the power supply without informing the general public beforehand. Protest in Valigama against liquor licenses. St. Joseph's College won the 45th Battle of the Saints limited overs encounter against St. Peter's College by 10 runs. St. Joseph's College also beat Trinity College Candy at the school's rugby league. Now for those stories in detail. A large-scale gravel record violating the terms and conditions of licenses issued for mining was reported from the Kokaville Muletivu area today. A large-scale grave racketing violating the terms and conditions of licenses issued for mining was reported from Kokaville Muletivu today. Locals charge that the racket has been continuously taking place over the past years and has adversely affected the environment. When News First inquired from the workers at the mine, they confirmed that the mining is being carried out violating the terms and conditions of the license. Although the license is issued from the Geological Survey and Mines Bureau, this is the manner in which the continuous mining of gravel has affected the area in Muletivu. One hundred acres of forest reserves have also been destroyed by this ongoing gravel racket. Although discussions were held with the district coordinating committee, the full ownership of the land has not been given to the Pradesha Sabha yet. So we are hoping to appoint a committee to look into this matter. A national festival to commemorate the Tripitakaya was held today. This was held under the auspices of President Maitri Pala Sirisena. The event that was held at the Mahamalu of the Temple of the Sacred Tooth Relic in Kandy saw the attendance of the Mahasanga, including the Mahanaka Theros of the three sects. <laughs> This event is held with the intention of making the pure Tripitaka teachings a national heritage and then afterwards a world heritage. I would like to introduce this as a very important meritorious event. In the past, the Mahasanghas together with the ruling leaders took steps to protect purity of the Tripitaka teachings. Therefore, the president is taking to make this a not only a national heritage but a world heritage as well is highly commendable. Today is the day that our president, together with the United Nations, takes steps to make the Tripitaka a world heritage. This is a magnanimous donation, a great effort and a very historical moment. In the past, the Tripitaka was protected together with the ruling kings and beneficiaries. A drama depicting the journey of Buddha's teachings after his enlightenment was also performed at the event. This is a historical day where our president Maitri Pala Sirisena is doing a very important and historical service that none of our past leaders have been able to do. I make a promise that at this sacred place that all of us will stand together and support the president in his journey to protecting Buddhism to make the Tripitaka firstly a national heritage and then a world heritage. I am proud 
to be the UN representative in a country which has been nominated for eight World Heritage Sites and two Memory of the World Register. In Sri Lanka, World Heritage includes the sacred city of Kandy, the ancient city of Sigiriya, the sacred city of Anuradhapura, the old town of Gaul, the ancient city of Polo Narawa, the Dambula Cave Temple, the Sinharaja Forest, the Central High Lands. Incredible. And very few countries have these world heritage. After a documentary on the Tripitaka, a ceremonial stamp to mark this occasion was unveiled. President Maitri Palasiri Sena presented the proposal to the UNESCO National Committee to declare the Tripitaka as a world heritage. It is clearly stated in the constitution that the Sri Lankan government will protect and nourish Buddhism. The Tripitaka is the only compiled book that holds an immense source of knowledge. I strongly believe that no matter what obstacles, difference of opinions, we will be able to make this a world heritage. After we decided to present a proposal to make the Tripitaka a world heritage, a representative from the Indian government contacted us and told us to give the Indian government the opportunity to second this proposal at the UNESCO. I believe that we can complete this task very successfully. <laughs> The second debate, the debate rather, on the second reading of the budget for 2019 took place in Parliament today. The expenditure heads of the Ministry of Industry and Commerce, resettlement of protracted displaced persons and cooperative development and the non-cabinet Ministry of Mass Media were debated today. We must determine whether media is optimised in our country. The only way to determine this fact is by agreeing to a media regulating system. When we discuss matters in this regard, many misinterpret this view, claiming that this is an initiative to control and silence the media industry. I propose that we all agree to a media regulating mechanism that would be democratic and be prepared with the consent of every stakeholder and not just the government. The initial draft documents have already been prepared in this regard. Print and electronic media in our country requires a domestic regulating mechanism. Honorable Speaker, social media at present requires a law to prevent hate speech. Looking at the fate of state media during the recent past, I will not point fingers at anyone. Honorable Minister, you hail from a reputed family who owns print media institutions. Your father Ranjit Vijayavadana was a media organization owner who was highly respected in Sri Lanka. I sometimes wonder whether this is a parcel bomb that was given to Minister Ruan Vijayavadana who has a bright future her head. As a young leader, Deputy Speaker, you made a statement regarding social media. Deputy Minister Parnavitana, we cannot control social media. Can we face this crisis by controlling and shutting down the social media? When wrongdoings were highlighted in Daraga town, social media was progressive. However, when such wrongdoings are highlighted continuously, social media is unfavorable. <laughs> The Lake House organization comes under the purview of the Public Trustees Department. Therefore, the Board of Directors of Lake House must be appointed by the Public Trustees Department. However, on the 5th of March 2019, a letter was submitted requesting the appointment of Ranjit Hulugalla as the Director of Lake House. Details in this regard are included in the attached document. This is his bio data. There is a hidden fact in this bio data. Ranjit Hulugalla was previously a Director at Perpetual Treasuries. Why is this fact not included in his bio data? That's not all. Ranjit Hulugalla's passport was suspended by courts. I want to know how Ranjit Hulugalla was appointed to this position. There are serious allegations against the present government over the central bank bond scam. There are several factors proving the Prime Minister's intervention to protect those involved in the bond scam. I clearly state this. The COP committee was to be held in the evening. Members of the COP representing the UNP were summoned to Temple Trees for a meeting that morning. Who headed this meeting? The Prime Minister. Who participated in this meeting? Arjuna Mahendran. There are questions that will be raised in the COP meeting. This is how they should be answered. The MPs were given instructions by Arjuna Mahendran. Is it a lie? What can be determined from this? The Prime Minister intervened to cover up this matter against such a backdrop. Do you not fear to appoint a former Director of Perpetual Treasuries as the Finance Director of Lake House? 
or does that mean you are afraid of perpetual treasuries? Or does it mean that the present government and the Prime Minister are in the custody of perpetual treasuries and Arjuna Mahendran? The government is afraid that Arjuna Mahendran will reveal the true picture. I agree that I submitted a letter requesting the appointment of Ranjit Ulugalla to Lake House. I was aware that he was previously a director at Perpetual Treasuries. However, this matter has no connection with the central bank bond scam. On the other hand, H.A.J. Hulugalla was my grandfather's friend who supported him to build the company. So I appointed Ranjit Ulugalla to Lake House as a tribute to his grandfather, H.A.J. Ulugalla. In the recent past, the President has participated in an event conducted by the Bribery Commission. We learned from an incident regarding an advertisement of the Rupavaini Corporation. Rupavaini submitted an estimate of 4.6 million rupees for an advertisement. It was stated that a cost of 1.7 million rupees would be incurred to produce this advertisement by a company called Salasini. However, this was given to a private institution named Storybook instead. There is a difference between 1 million rupees when compared with the estimate. When we look into this matter, the production activities for the advertisement were awarded to Subhash Pinnavala, who is the son-in-law of Garmini Viangode. All this document and information will be included in the Hansard. Previously, we had decided to impose a tax on foreign teledramas. Our objective was to utilize the tax income generated in this regard to support the local teledrama industry. We wanted to financially support the actors when they fall ill and to provide compensation when they pass away. However, at present, none of these things happen. Currently, there is a mafia taking place on the rating issue. Only numbers are considered. If a private institution installs 300 televisions in 300 houses, that is what they consider as people's preference. This is reality. They do not even consider a coverage area. Therefore, we cannot agree with this. The government must intervene into this matter. If not, I believe that media institutions will take undue advantage. TNA parliamentarian E. Saravanabhavan spoke about the media in parliament today. When it comes to media, there is no difference between Mahindra Rajapaksa's government and Ranim Vikramasinghe's government. The current government can say that the media suppression during the Rajapaksa's regime did not happen during this government. But I don't see a difference between the two governments while letting the murderers roam freely and establishing a regulatory system. Were you not able to capture anyone who killed the journalists? If you cannot capture the murderers, that means you assist in the murder. Where is justice in labelling media as black media while shouting that you are being attacked by the news broadcasters? It is said that certain people from factions also assist in such attacks against media. Vijit Vijay Muni Soiza is lucky because when you file cases against media, how much can you collect? Around 100 million? How much will it be if you collect 10 million each? There are around 3 to 4. This is what you call black media. We have proposed to hold debates about black media in January and reveal names from top to bottom. There are false rumours in the South. This is being done by media. Sirisa, Shakti and MTV spread false information. It is the media who stoop lower than the politicians who engage in politics. We cannot tolerate the media anymore. That is why certain things are being done against MTV as black media. Meanwhile, speaking at an event today, parliamentarian Keheli Rambukwala expressed the following views on media freedom. I don't think it is suitable to regulate media. The media can do self-regulation. You can take the necessary steps if there is any deviation. There should be a media freedom. You cannot have a Right to Information Act and, on the other hand, attempt to regulate media. Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe always asks to keep the checks ready to pay compensation while looking up in Parliament. They have pressurised the media so much. But they also go around saying that there is media freedom. This is an attempt to stop the objections raised by the people of this country. The annual students' conference 2019 of the Institute of Certified Management, Accountants of Sri Lanka, was held in Colombo this morning. The event was held under the auspices of Director General of Commission to investigate allegations of bribery or corruption, President's Counsel Sarah Jaimanyev. 
Our laws, anti-corruption laws are more than 25 years old. Bribery law in this country does not have private sector bribery. Only in Sri Lanka, only the public servants are culpable. If you go to Hong Kong and Malaysia, even in the private sector, if you accept a bribe, it is a criminal offense. So likewise, we have to amend our bribery law, we have to amend our commission law, we have to amend our asset. What do you mean by asset law? Asset law means that even if you don't take bribes, if the prosecution can show that you have certain assets that is not compatible with your income, what happened? Then you will be charged for bribery. The conference was held to mark the 20th anniversary of the Institute of Certified Management Accountants of Sri Lanka. Let's now take a look at more views expressed in Parliament today. The Minister and the State Minister is not present when I am making this statement. I think the Minister, Deputy Minister and the State Minister are not present here. But it is okay. At least you are listening to this. I am listening to everything as the Speaker. All what I do is listening to you. Firstly, I should remind you of the Ilmanite mine owned by Sand Corporation. There is a rumour on social media that this mine has been put up for sale. I wanted to ask the Minister if there is any truth in this. When Sagala Ratnayaka was the Minister of Police, he got a call from the IGP. Who is that Nilame? That Nilame was the chairman of the Mine Sand Corporation in Pulmude. After this corruption was reported to the FCID, the ministers of your government and the members of your ministry intervened and saved the accused. I state with much responsibility that a Japanese company has come forward to buy this mine. I know with certainty who is behind this Japanese company. You also know this, but you cannot say this in parliament. You are not the government. If you were truly the government, then you would have managed and utilized the resources of your country responsibly. If 100 national industrialists are convened and talked to, they will all say one thing. They will say that they are all doomed. On one side, it is the Ministry of Industry. On the other side, it is Minister Malik Samaravikrama's Ministry of Foreign Investments. There is no connection between these two. I am too an alumni of Royal College and I am in the opposition. Don't insult Royal College. The aim should be to practically use the things you were taught at school. The foundation stone was laid for the Volkswagen factory. They said 100,000 people will be employed. Did they get the jobs? There is no factory, no foundation stone and no jobs. Who are we going to tell all of this to? Interested parties from Japan, England, Germany and America came down to Sri Lanka last month to buy the graphite mine. The ministry did not even give them an appointment. I asked the president to take this under the Ministry of Environment. The initial phase of the Enterprise Sri Lanka program was launched in Valigama Matra today under the auspices of Minister of Finance Mangala Samaravira. The event was attended by Ministers Malik Samaravikrama, John Amrathunga and Deputy Ministers Nalim Bandara and Ranjit Aluvihare. The public was informed on the various loan schemes that will be provided through the Enterprise Sri Lanka program. The southern coast area in Valigama is a fast developing tourist destination. We have introduced a loan scheme that will support everyone to become SME businessmen who can earn in dollars. Meanwhile, several religious leaders, including the Mahasangha, staged a demonstration opposite the auditorium in Valigama, where the Enterprise Sri Lanka event took place. The demonstration was staged based on a newspaper article that alleged 600 liquor licenses will be distributed at this event. Subsequently, the Acting Commissioner of Excise arrived at the scene and explained the prevailing situation to the demonstrators. <laughs> However, following the event, Minister of Finance Mangala Samaravira convened a press briefing and made the following statement. Beer and wine, with a right. The licenses will only be issued for beer and wine. Those who are interested in obtaining these licenses can get them even today. If the required information is submitted to the relevant counter, you can obtain the licenses quickly. I do not see any fault in providing a beer license to those who engage in their business activities in a legal manner. 
The Director of Education for the Nore Elia Educational Division, S. Harish Chandran, made the following remarks at the Gum Madhu program held yesterday. I should mention that one party that has a history of 100 to 200 years was advertising the fact that they will be taking their office to the village, but Gammadha has already gone to the village. Now only that powerful party is taking their office to the village. I do not know to speak on credibility of this statement. It's been promoted on newspapers, on TV and even on your own channel. This organization has the power to change the government and show the mistakes of this government to the people. It is not good to talk about politics in a school, but this is something that has to be said. <laughs> The Director of Education for the Nureli Educational Division made these remarks at a gum at the event to lay the foundation stone for a sanitary facility at the Holy Trinity Tamil School in Nureli. Parliamentarian Kanchana Vijay Sekara questioned in Parliament today regarding the power outages experience in several parts of the country during the past few days. A major electricity crisis has arisen. Yesterday, newspapers reported that the CEB has decided to have power cuts without notifying the public. Honorable Speaker, this decision has inconvenienced the general public. At least if they announce the time that power will be disconnected, the people can be prepared for it. These power cuts will not affect Colombo 7, but other areas will definitely be affected. Leader of the House, please inform the Minister of Power in this regard. <laughs> Following an event held this morning, Minister of Power and Energy Ravi Karunanayaka responded to these allegations. The real situation is when we experienced a sudden breakdown in the Norochole power plant. The demand has increased by 15% due to the prevailing heat. The demand exceeds supply. These factors have resulted in continuous power cuts. Within the next 10 days, we will address these issues and restore everything to its previous state. No, I will disregard such claims. I believe everyone will work in favour of us. It's been only 65 days since I took over. During this time period, we managed to establish two LNG power plants. During this short period, the generation of 194 megawatts using WindForce LTL solar systems have also been approved. Yes, we will have requested for this. Actually, no one is to be blamed here. We will continue to a final decision and make an announcement on Monday. Can electricity be sadly disconnected without prior notice? News first inquired from the Public Utilities Commission on this issue. Except for maintenance activities that take place on a regular basis and emergency breakdowns, during other planned power cuts, the consumer must be given prior notice. Prior to informing the consumer, the CEB must first inform the PUCSL. Failing to do so is a violation of the conditions stated in the CEB's power generations license. Anuruddha Ratwatha from 1994 to 2001, Karujai Surya from 2001 to 2004, Susil Premajantha 2004 to 2005, John Seneviratna from 2005 to 2010, Champika Ranavaka from 2010 to 2013, Pavitra Vanyavrachi 2013 to 2015, Champika Ranavaka from January 2015 to August 2015, and Ranjit Siamalapitya from August 2015 to October 2018. Today, we are reaping the bitter consequences of the decisions and actions taken by the former ministers of power over the past years. Our sincere gratitude goes out to all of them for keeping the public in the dark. Four warships arrived in the island today for Australia's largest ever defence engagement with Sri Lanka, the Indo-Pacific Endeavour 2019. Over 1,000 personnel on four vessels arrived in Colombo and Trincomalee today. Australian and Sri Lankan Defence Forces will work together on disaster assistance planning, naval manoeuvres and military training activities to improve cooperation, familiarity and interoperability before ships depart on the 30th of March sailing for India. The ships will also sail for Malaysia, Thailand, Vietnam and Indonesia and Singapore before returning to Australia. I'm very proud to have this opportunity to engage with the Sri Lankan Tri-Services and with the Sri Lankan Government to deepen our engagement 
with Sri Lanka as a partner of choice? Look, this is the first stop of our Pacific uh, and Indo-Pacific Endeavour uh, engagement mission. It's an important stop given the history that Sri Lanka holds in the Indian Ocean and in the present time and I, I believe into the future. We want to be part of the Sri Lankan involvement in the, in, in the Indian Ocean for the future and we want Sri Lanka to be happy to be have, have us as a strategic partner in the Indian Ocean. Raigam Tele East 2019 is currently being held at the Nolum Pokoto Theatre in Colombo. News First's Bernadine Jasinga won the award for Best TV English one News one Anchor of the Year. News First Gum at the Pradesh Yamandape won the award for Best Television Discussion Program. News First Chanu Disanayaka won the award for Best Television Presenter Singhala of the Year. Sulankuru Low pro Program aired on our sister channel Sisa TV won the Best Television Music Program Award. The 79th National Day of Pakistan was celebrated at the High Commission of the Islamic Republic of Pakistan with the attendance of the Pakistani community based in Sri Lanka. The Pakistan High Commissioner Major General Dr. Shaheeb Ahmad Hashmat unfurled the flag to the tune of the Pakistan's national anthem. Special messages by the President and the Prime Minister of Pakistan were read out. A cake commemorating Pakistan's National Day was cut by the High Commissioner along with the children. Today, the 23rd uh, March, is the National Day of Pakistan. In 1947, Pakistan became an independent state. And today, it has a very important place in the Committee of Nations. Pakistan stands for peace, progress, and harmony. And we support the promotion of peace, progress, and development, especially in the region. Pakistan and Sri Lanka enjoy a very good friendly relations which have been strengthened consistently over the last 70 years. I wish Sri Lanka, the Sri Lankan people, the Sri Lankan government more political stability and economic progress. Well now in sports news, St. Joseph's College Colombo beat rival St. Peter's College Colombo by 10 runs under the Duckworth Lewis method in their 45th limited over encounter for the Reverend Father Peter Pillay Trophy at the SSC grounds today. Batting first, St. Joseph College were bundled out for 250 runs in 49.3 overs. The Josephians were initially in a spot of bother when they lost their first six wickets for 61 runs. However, Sachin Taravindu and Lakshan Gamage steadied the Joes' innings with a 179-run stand for the seventh wicket, making it the highest partnership for the seventh wicket in the history of the annual encounter between the two schools. Lakshan Gamage scored 101, while Sachin Taravindu was dismissed for 74. Chasing their target, St. Peter's College Colombo were 175 for the loss of five wickets, when bad lighting interrupted play in the 41st over, forcing the win of the match to be decided under the Duckworth Lewis method. Santosh Gunatilaka top scored for the Peterites, while Dinit Anjula scored 32. Meanwhile, yesterday St. Joseph's College Colombo beat Trinity College Candy in the school's rugby league. The game, which was played at the Havelock grounds in Colombo, saw the Josephians score 25 points to Trinity's 7 at the end of the first half. At the conclusion of the game, St. Joseph's College were well in front, scoring 37 points to Trinity's 19 points. And that's a wrap of tonight's weekend primetime news. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Sharan Jorampati. Good night and take care.